So now let's look at this production in more, in more production function in, in more detail. Again, let's let's use the example of you studying for an exam that's tomorrow. So you have 24 hours for studying. Remember that you had two two type of in, uh, inputs. You have your your fixed inputs, and let's for now let's let's just, uh, let's concentrate on IQ so that you you know between now and tomorrow you cannot change your IQ. But the thing you can change is the uh, number of hours you study. All right. So that for you will be your uh, your variable input. Call that the variable input. Okay. Number of hours studying. Okay. So let's say when you you know you don't study anything, you uh, you won't be able to answer any correct problem. So that one's easy. Now let's say you study one hour. And you're very productive because at one hour you're just learning the material, you were able to gain a lot. Let's say you're able to answer five problems. Now, as you know, when you study for exams, I'm sure you deal with that a lot. Uh, the more you hours you dedicate, yeah, you will get better, but every additional hour probably is not going to be as productive as the next hour. So that's what this production function is going to recreate. So let's say your third hour, the number of uh, 12. The fourth, would you, the fourth hour you study allow you to answer two more for 14, and the fifth hour you study allow you to answer one more to 15, right? So I'm sure you deal with this every time you study for an exam. At some point, you're going to say, well, it doesn't matter if I study any more hours. I've reached my limit. There's, this is the, the best I can do to this exam. Yeah, you will probably be able to increase the number of correct problems if you increase the hours, but as you see here, every additional hour is increasing your uh, correct problems by a lot less than the previous hour. The first hour, the first hour allows you to answer five problems, so increase your number of correct problems by five. The second hour, increase your number of correct problems by four. The third hour, increase your number of correct problems by three. The, the fourth hour by two, and the fifth hour by one. And this makes sense because you're working over on a fixed input. You're working with an IQ that you, it's already fixed. There's nothing you can do about it. Same with, with um, let's say, the amount of um, previous knowledge you have before coming into a class. And the only thing you can change is the variable input, but this variable input has to use its fixed input that is fixed. So over time, what's going to happen is that the variable input is going to give you all it can. And at some point... Every additional hour, even though it increases your total number of output, is going to start to decrease. So economists call this diminishing marginal returns to an input. And it's usually the variable input, right? And we see this in any kind of situation. For instance, this could be the same uh, way in which if you have a pizzeria, the same way you will see if you have the number of hours of work. And this could be, let's say, the number of pizzas you produce, right? And in this case, your variable, your fixed input was your oven, if you have a pizzeria, and your variable input was the number of workers you have or number of worker hours you have, right? So this will be worker hours. And the first worker you add, you only have one over, and the first worker allows you to increase your pizza by a lot. Now the second worker, yeah, you can actually start, you know, the second worker worked in the cash register, the, uh, the first worker was still making pizzas. So you can increase your output, but the first, the second worker is not going to be as productive as the first worker because you only have one oven. Now, when you add a third worker, now they start to get in the way of the of, of the other workers. And since, since you only have one oven, each additional worker is not going to increase your output, in this case, your number of pizzas, by a lot. So the, we call this diminishing marginal returns to an input. And it's something that is just physical. You see that there's no money here. It's just a matter of... Of physics, when you um, increase a variable thing, in this case worker hours, or it could be the time of hours you you dedicate to study, uh, that need a fixed input, in this case an oven, but it could be your IQ. Eventually, the variable input is going to become less productive, right? And we call this diminishing marginal returns to an input, in this case a variable input. 
So we can see this very easily, right, in this case. Or we can also see it in a graph. If you have a graph like this, where you put the, the amount of, um, of workers here, and then you put your number of pizzas here, so that will be your output here, you will actually see the same, you know, the, the, uh, a very interesting way of seeing the same pattern, right? So this will be the first worker, allows you to brought you, say you have, um, let's say you have um, five here, 10, 15, 15 up here. Right? So the first worker allows you to bring five. When you have no workers, you produce nothing. The second worker um, allows you to produce nine, so it'll be around here. Now the third worker allows you to produce about 12, so you're around here. Fourth worker allows you to produce 14. Right? So you see what's what is happening is that this curve, if you connect all these dots, what you're seeing is a curve that kind of increasing, it's increasing, your workers are, are bringing more output, but it's increasing at a decreasing rate. It's increasing at a decreasing rate, right? Right? Meaning that the change, the change every time is kind of actually getting smaller. That's what we have seen in the previous one, right? So this was um, here five, four, uh, four, and so forth. So we call this curve, we call it the production function. Remember that? This is, this is what happens in the square. What happens in the square is that every time you have, you change a variable input, when one of the inputs is fixed, you're going to exhibit this increasing or decreasing rate, which is the diminishing marginal returns. And we call it diminishing marginal returns because the slope or the change every time you increase your, your worker uh, is going to be called the marginal so this slope is going to be called the marginal product of whatever it is. In this case, it's going to be your worker, so we're going to call it the marginal product of labor. But if you were increasing anything else, it will be the marginal product of the variable input. All right. So this, as you remember, is going to be let's, let's for let's use the MPL for subscript. So MPL is going to be equal to well. The way we calculate in this is going to be the changing output every time you change your labor. So when you're changing it one by one, the first, are, the first uh, uh, worker brings you five, the second worker four, and so forth and so forth. Okay? So in the next minute lesson, we're going to see how this looks when we are, are combining both inputs at the same time.